tell us a bit about your childhood and what it was like growing up in northern Uganda. Right. Yeah, I was born in northern Uganda. Uh, I just recall a hooker. But uh, I don't know much about my childhood because I grew up with my parents. And when I, when I was about three years old, I just realized that we were living in the car. So I don't know much about it. That is just the one I can tell you. Yes. So when you say camp, what, what sort of camp was it? You know, we were in a camp. That camp was the... It was brought about... It was brought about... Uh, there was a war. So it was a war camp? Yes, there was a war camp. Yeah. Whereby uh, LRA rebels which was lit, the, the war was led by Joseph Cohn. Uh -huh. uh, uh, Joseph Cohn is known worldwide. Yes. Yeah. And the war lasted for 20, 20 years, over 20 years. Since I was not even born, it's, I just found the war there. But the life in the camp was so, so terrible. Okay, so yes. how, how long did you stay in the camp? Uh, in the camp, I stayed uh, roughly, I could say I stayed in the camp for 13 years. 13 years? Okay. Yes. So explain to me, what was the conditions like in the camp? What was it like on a daily basis, living in such conditions? Paint me a picture of what that was like. Yes, actually, there was bombs. Yeah. Exchanging bullets between the, the Ugandan soldiers and then the revelers. Yeah. Whereby at night, you know, in the camp we were living, you know, they gathered people in the church. Whereby, when nights come, they they, 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 pick, they they put people in the house and then they lock. And the soldiers gather around eh? around the, the church. So when, when nights come, they, they start exchanging the bullets. And the, and the sound makes some, some children eh? not, comfort, not comfortable. So when, when you're walking in, during daytime, you walk in fear, in fear. And even when you're eating, you're eating in fear. Yeah. So you don't you don't feel like night should come because the war the war was uh, I could call it it was during night time. Okay. Uh, sometimes they also come during daytime. Whereby when they come during daytime, you know the villagers. Yeah. We who are in the camp, we just run away uh, uh, in the bushes. Yeah. Yeah. So for somebody like me that's living in the West, coming from the United Kingdom, we don't really understand what that fear of a war camp is like. So tell the people back home. Or paint them a picture of what that fear was like. What is it like to live in fear on a daily basis? Yes, the fear comes in that when when the, when the revelers come at night, mm -hmm. you, they they exchange, eh? they start fighting again, they just expecting to kill to kill those ones in the camp. Okay. Yeah, you know they they are annoyed, they are annoyed of the Ugandan government, so they are afraid, they are afraid to get the power, so they. The annoyance, they are now just standing, they were just standing on, on us. Okay. So the life was terrible. If I, if I remember it, I feel like I should even shed tears. Okay. Life was really, really miserable. Okay. You can't even, you can't be peace. Peace was totally destroyed. Peace was not even there. Agriculture was not even carried out. We tried everything. Things were just hard. Even, you know, and uh, for example, <coughs> during war, Mm -hmm. During that war camp, uh, there were some old Muses, old women, I could call them my grandmother and then the fathers. So, when you know they, they fear those uh, sound, yes. when you know when they when they drop the bomb, some even get in the house, some even uh, urinate in the house. So, life becomes terrible. You, you see, even somebody just being wetted with the, with the urine. Here. You, for fear, okay. and even me, one day they they came, they came at night and then they attack people. So they, they came in, they came in large numbers and then they defeated the the, the, the Ugandan soldiers. So they opened and then we took off anywhere. You know, even I was a young kid, I don't know. I fear bullet if I hear sound, I just run anywhere. Yes. Okay. Not even knowing that the bullets can kill. So you're basically running for your life. Yes. What you're saying? Yeah, I ran away because I wanted to save my life. I fear even bomb just that. Yeah. Yes. So James, 
tell us a bit more about this war that happened in northern Uganda. What, what, how did it start? What was it about? What was the objectives of, of the war, of the LRA group? What were they trying to achieve? Well, the war basically in the north started around 1986 when um, the current government came in, what they call the NRL, the NRL, the NRL government. Mm -hmm. It launched a Bush war in 1980 against the government then. So the soldiers of, of the, what we, it used to be called the Okote 2, the Okote 2 government. The soldiers of Okote 2 government re retreated from Kampala and went to the north. Yeah. The bulk of the army was coming from the north. So when they went to the north, they started, they decided to stage a rebellion there. So they staged a rebellion from 1986 onwards, and that rebellion took 20 years. For 20 years or remain? It was a rebellion that had support of, it had external support. Mm -hmm. There was support from Central African Republic because of, there was fighting. Okay, there was general institution in that area, Central African Republic and the northern part of, of Africa. There was that was going south and Sudan. So when this defeated army went to the north, they decided to form an alliance with the army in Sudan, southern Sudan. So there was always that incursion from southern Sudan to northern Uganda and it was a difficult war. It turned out more of a terrorist war because there was no clear objectives. Right. You would imagine that these people would, would want to fight fake territory, but they would not go beyond their own territory. But what they did in most cases was cause men on their own people. There was a lot of people, they would get people, they would abduct children. Then when the children abducted, they had a cut off their lips, cut off their limbs, cut off their ears. It was such a terrible war. So they cut off their lips, yes. their limbs, yes. the limbs, yes. and even cook people. There's a time they would even show people in cooking pots. Okay. And, and even young children, they can just even pound them in the mortar. Okay. Just found the young children, you know. So it was Very a senseless terrible. war. Yes. Senseless is a good word. A yes. senseless war. With no clear objectives. No clear objectives. Yes. Fought for 20 years. And that's why when he's talking about the camp life, the camp life was basically created to, to, to pave space for fighting. You know, when people are fighting, or like when the elephants are fighting, it's the grass to suffer. So this they the so what he what Moses calls the villagers. All the community in the north had a lot to see. Yes, experienced a lot. The, the camp life was not easy in itself. They abducted because schools had to close, hospitals had all social structures had to close. There was time I think when a very popular story was about the Boke girls. Who had these guys came and took off, took the girls from the boarding school. I think up to this day, this girl, some of these girls are sitting in the bush. Yes. So it was. It is something very difficult to explain, especially for some of us who are not from the north, but yes. it affected us economically because the country was at war for 20 years. Yes. yes. Okay, so the likes of Moses then, that you lived in the north, you grew up in these conditions of war. How did you come about? Actually, we'll just stop there, we'll call it there.